Good afternoon, good evening, or good night, depending on where and when you are joining us for this wonderful presentation, this discussion that we're going to have today, all about online appointments getting better and better and better, and they are improved. Uh, we talked a decade ago about trying to schedule the impossible. The, po the impossible just took a little bit longer. That's all. Glad you're here with me today. Glad that we are able to spend some time together. Those of you who are joining right now, go ahead and type into the Q&A, the questions and answers box, where it is that you are joining us from today. Let us know where that is. Now, the reason for this is because we are to have an interactive discussion. Let's let's have an interactive discussion. You've got questions. We've got answers. We've got the experts here. We've got people that are using this, that it's awesome and it's amazing. And it's, it's all right up front. So go ahead and type in where you're joining us from today. Let's give you a shout out for today. Uh, John Bridgewater, San Lorendo, California. Lynn, Lynn Dar, Lynn. San Leandro. San Leandro. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, John. What's happening? It's good to have you here. And David from uh, Michigan, John Powell. John Powell's in the house. Richmond, Virginia. Represent. Well done, John. Glad to have you here, brother. Uh, Andrew Ender from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Corey. Corey from uh, Rose Rosemas. Car Care, Hudsonville, Michigan. Oh, that's awesome. And Kakui Carl. Kakui Carl, good to have you here, brother. Written Washington. Love you too, brother. Thank you so much. So glad you are here today so that we can have this super awesome and amazing conversation. Now that you know how the Q&A works, you type in your information there. We'll give you a shout out. Sergio Garza from uh, Fort Worth, Texas. Nice. Down there with our, the, our friends from the J&J &J show. They're down in Midlothian, Texas. Jeff Buckley. Shout out to you as well, brother. Super awesome. Anonymous attendee from Maryland. Well, hello, Anonymous. <laughs> I don't know how you were able to do that. But that's pretty cool. Uh, glad that you guys are here with us. We're, we're going to have an awesome discussion because we're, we're talking about online appointments on online scheduling which is so important these days there's so many things that we do that are all online i mean i think about it what i'm doing myself i i click online and i i set up a, a haircut i do that online appointment setter i i order pizza from online we order from jimmy john's online we order uh, groceries from walmart and i can do this all from my cell phone so it's so so important that our shops have that same ability to schedule online. So it's super awesome. We're, we're going to have an amazing conversation. I, I'm super excited for this. My name is Jimmy Lee. I am the Institute for Automotive Business Excellence. Super excited that we're able to be here together to share this time and talk about our shops and our business and what we're doing to make things awesome and amazing. Joining me today is the co-founder of Auto Ops, Stephen Faffel. Stephen? Are you there? Do you click the button? <laughs> I am ecstatic to be here. <laughs> is it working? It uh, is working. Audience, are you able to see Stephen? Just got to check on this every once in a while, right? You know, because that that internet there in New Jersey may or may not be as effective as we think it is. A long, long walks with with my dog on the beach. They, that can only happen in New Jersey, right? And and you enjoy yoga as oh, well, right? Love it. <laughs> Oh, climbing. man. Active yoga, rock climbing. Active yoga. Oh, I thought you were going to be like hot yoga where you, everybody <laughs> smells like sweaty feet. Also joining us today is Pro Automotive, Jason Russo. Jason, how you doing, brother? Doing good. How you guys doing today? We're good. We're good. Now, you got to move out of the way a little bit so we can see your sign there oh, in the background because the that Pro mm. Automotive sign is awesome. <laughs> and, uh, you know, not for anybody to be distracted by that horse trailer over your left shoulder. <laughs> 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 oh, man, I'm so excited for everybody that's here. And thank you, Carl, for letting me know that we can see Stephen. And can you see Jason as well? I'm assuming you can see Jason as well. So we're, we're going to talk about... 
online appointment scheduling. And, and to do this, Jason, let's let's go backwards in time. Let's go back to before online appointments, back when, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, what was it like for you in your shop? How how would you handle scheduling customers? Sure. So um, first, thank you for having me. Um, it's a good time. Um, you know, appointments were always people walking in the door or picking up the phone. Um, it was totally different than it is today. Um, it took a lot of time. Uh, you know, you spend 15, 20 minutes on the phone with somebody just for an appointment sometimes, or maybe even a 10 or 15 minute conversation with them at the front counter just to make an appointment. Maybe it's just an oil change or maybe it was something bigger, but, um, re really what, what online appointments have done for us today is just maximize efficiency. Yeah. Oh, for sure. So let's go back here to the phone. They would have to call you on the phone. So you're hoping that your marketing, your advertising, maybe your loyalty program was something that had grabbed their attention and that you were top of mind when they're ready for that oil service. That was it. So All right. So now, Stephen, uh, or sorry, uh, Jason, I'm mm -hmm. looking at the names here and, and saying names. Uh, Jason, I call you on the phone. I'm a first time customer. How do you get me into the schedule? We hope we can fit you in when you're available and when you want it. Are you flipping open the book, going oh, to the flipping, schedule? Yeah, it was a piece, piece, you know, a calendar we had on our desk, you know, going through pages and everything written down. It was a different time. Yeah. Did you have whiteout? Was there a lot of whiteout correction paper? Tons of it. Or or big X's <laughs> across things. Or... <laughs> right. Okay. So I'm, I'm looking for an oil service. Uh, you finally get me in on the schedule. What if I'm a returning customer? Jason, I'm a returning customer. I, I, I've been loyal to you for five, six, seven years. We just moved into the area. I'm loyal to you. I, I keep bringing my car back and I keep bringing it back, keep bringing it back. When I call to set up that oil service, is it the same process? For the most part, yeah. And and to interject, Jason, did you know when that, when that person called, were you familiar? Were, had they been in my shop? Did you know if they were a returning customer? Did they know? Did you know if they were a new customer? It, you know, you, you you had your regulars that you you established a, a, a relationship with that you did know, you know, just by voice or whatever. But for the most part, you know, you were waiting until they gave you their name. <laughs> so when when somebody gave you the name, like like I'm calling you 10, 15, 20 years ago, and I give you my name, are you looking me up in your point of sale system? Are you trying to find figure out who I am as quickly as you possibly can? Absolutely. Yep. Or are you just going straight or, to the or, schedule? Or, or you're looking at the caller ID and maybe their name's on there. Uh, okay. Okay. So my name's there. You've got my number. You go to the point of sale. Now, when you're scheduling that appointment, you know that I've been loyal to you for the last five years or so. Let's call it five years. Sure. Um, there maybe have been some declined services. Does your point of sale system show you this or do you just go for scheduling the the oil service? You pretty much just go in to schedule the oil service at that time because you're, again, you're trying to maximize efficiency. You you, you don't want to spend half your time on the phone when you got work to get done in the shop or another customer in front of you. There's, there's a lot of variables there. Yeah. So, this, I mean, this is like, this is a long process. This is a long drawn out process of, of everything that we're looking at and everything that we're doing. It, it makes it difficult. Absolutely. Yeah. What can right, we do so, to streamline that whole process? Make it simpler. Let's let's go to some early online appointments. W what did that look like? Do, have you had a few different online appointment scheduling sure. systems? Sure. Um, really, it started out with an email. You know, you get an email saying this customer requested this day, this time, and then you hope that you have that day, that time available, and. And hope that they left some contact info in there so you could reach out to them if you don't. Okay. There's a lot, a lot of questions in the beginning that weren't answered and just couldn't get the information from them. Okay. Okay. I, I'm remembering back, goodness sakes, I think this is 12 years ago, Greg Buckley had a, a concept, an idea, and I think it was called Virtual Advisor. It was an email that you would send out to a customer and and request information such as what services they want to perform or even if they had declined services previously, do they want to do it this time as well? So this is the email that you're referring to, this email concept idea 
of scheduling virtually via email. Very similar. Okay. And the amount of shop owners I talked to who would be like, I would show up on a Monday morning and the first two hours of my Monday morning were just responding to all these emails, even just showing up on a Thursday morning. It's like Wednesday night, everyone got off work, you're sending in all these emails, whether it's a, you know, a drop off slip that someone left or just, yeah, a bunch of emails or a bunch of voicemails. This is the first two hours of my day is just getting back to those people, trying to schedule them in. Maybe I can actually make contact with them again. Maybe I send them an email and I never hear from them again. It's a very good okay. point. Okay. And, and what do you see today? What do, what do you see now? Today, the, what, what we have just makes it so much easier. Um, we have integration with our point of sale system okay. that can read our schedule. Um, uh, so many different parameters that we can set to allow people to either wait or, or drop off or um, they can virtually see what time we have available if, to set their schedule um, saves advisors a ton of time, saves front counter staff a, a ton of time. Um, it, it's got it's got so much more efficient over the years. It's it's come a long way. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like it. Do you feel that there's any sort of that relationship that you have with a customer that it that suffers because I'm not replying to their emails or I'm not talking to them on the phone? Is there any part or portion of that relationship that diminishes? Absolutely not, because we're still talking to them at some point. You know, he's still picking up the phone. You know, they, even if they dropped it off, um, you, you, you got to have a conversation at some point. That is true. And that conversation might even be texting. You might be texting back and sure. forth. Here's your digital inspection. Give me a call. We can talk about it or send me a text. We'll talk about it. Yeah. You, you got, you got a bunch of different generations you're dealing with here. So, you know, your younger clientele, it's all text. You're lucky if you can get them on the phone. Um, <laughs> uh, so, so, some of the, some of your older clientele, they, they want to talk to you. So, right, but yeah, but yeah, they're still worm here. Yeah, they're 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 still scheduling the appointment online though. Who who is even the older generation? Right, See, that's what I'm yeah. talking about. I'm like everybody. I'm checking out Grandma and Grandpa, 80 years old. They're on Facebook. They got the iPad. They're going to town. Of course, Absolutely. they're stalking all the grandkids. That's what they do. <laughs> but they go online. They do. They do. They, they do. schedule these yeah. appointments. Yeah. Yeah. And I would like to say the amount of ageism that I've heard when I introduce online scheduling, they're like, my older customers won't do it. I've had multiple shop owners come back to me and be like, I've been surprised. Like these people who are 60 plus are scheduling online just because they, they still, they're used to going to a website. It's not like an app. I think if it was an app, it would be a different story. It's like, I have to go into mm. the, the apps or download. This is an app. This is something that's on the shop's website. They're already going to the shop's website. They have the option. They see a phone number right there. And a lot of them just choose that, hey, I want to just schedule an appointment online. Or, or but, even uh, just, just a link in your email. You know, your email marketing you're sending your customers. There's a, you, you have a link in there. They can just click on it and book an appointment. Nice. Now, that's interesting. Do you do that on every single email you send, Jason? Every email has a book appointment button, yeah. Okay. And um, what percentage of... Man, I'm going to un, unknown territory. Sure. What percentage of your appointments that are made come through the website, come through the email, come through a text message? Do you do you know how that mix looks like for that's, you? That's a, that's a good question. We're actually working on some metrics to uh, be able to calculate to that. that? At, at, yeah, at this point. Yeah. Okay. Um, we should, uh, Stephen. I think um, that's in the works. Yeah, that's definitely, yeah, basically campaign source tracking to say, yeah. okay, I have my my scheduler, but being able to understand which ones came through email, which ones came through a QR code on a mailer, which ones came through a social media post. Uh, we have, yeah, we're, uh, we collect that data. Oh, that'd be fascinating to know who comes through the website, who comes through the email, texting, uh, social media, Facebook, Yelp, Instagram, where the where is it that people are scheduling with the, the shop? And that helps you, Jason, to know where should I put my marketing dollars? Yeah, exactly. And even just, yeah, even just starting with when people call on a phone, I have no idea where they came from. At least here I have, yeah, all their contact information right away um, has been a been a game changer. And even just being able to help 
understand your, your, with your marketing company, just be able to see your dollars spent with them, uh, provide more ROI at the end of the day. Well, and that also proves what marketing is working. Totally. Yeah. And once again, the, when it comes to, to online scheduling, online scheduling doesn't mean that much if you don't have some good marketing actually driving viewers um, to your website, to all these different other channels. Oh, yeah. So true. So true. Yeah. And so you got to let your customers know, you know, when they're even if they're checking out, you know, hey, next time you want to book an appointment, go right on that website. Makes it easy. Makes yeah. it simple and easy. Do you find that you have been scheduled further out now because of the convenience of the online appointments? No, absolutely not. So it's the same as if uh, people are picking yep. up the phone call. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. I, I, I think it's easier for them, for the client just as well. You know, when, when they're on the phone and they say they call and they want an appointment for tomorrow, at 8 a.m., but we yeah. don't have that available to wait. Um, and then we give them a bunch of other times that they can. Well, now they got to make a quick decision. Can I do this? Can I do that? Where if it's just on a computer screen in front of them, they can, they can make, they can take their time making that decision and make it a better time for them. Yeah. Yeah. That's we, we, have, we have, right. we have, we have, we have very, I can't even think of any online appointment that is a no show. Almost, I, I, I would say 95 plus percent of our online appointments all show up. Wow. I, I wonder from our audience, what percentage of online appointments that they get through their system, what what percentage of them are actually showing up? That would be an interesting information mm -hmm. to know. So if you're, if you're watching this, type in what percentage of your online appointments show up. Uh, that would be interesting to know. Um, and then if anybody has any questions, comments, concerns, love to hear about that as well. And, and I have a question for you, Jason. So it, it, I'm a loyal customer. I've been to you for five years. You, you don't necessarily recognize my West Coast accent when I call in per se. You probably do actually. So you don't know if it's me or not. So when I call in, if you had recommended breaks to me previously and said, hey, you know what, we need to watch this. By your recollection, you would say, okay, Jimmy, today's probably the day that we need to do it. Do you wait until the car's in to make that recommendation or do you try and get that over the phone at the appointments being set? Well, you'd love to do it over the phone if you have time. Um, just not always the case. Uh, sometimes you don't have time to pull up the customer record. Sometimes you just don't remember the last time the customer was in. Uh, but with online appointments now and with the integration with our point of sale system, all that deferred work is presented to them while they're making their appointment. So, so when I'm making an appointment on, on your website and I'm going in for myself, I'm setting up the oil service. Cause I know I hit my 5,000. We, that's what we agreed with synthetic oil, 5,000. We're good to go. It's going to give me the options of selecting all these deferred services. Yeah. Deferred declined, whatever, you know, whatever you call it in your system, as long as you, select the vehicle that the correct vehicle it's already been in our software and um at the end of the checkout process it's going to ask you you know these were recommended last time is this something you want to take care of while you're here okay you 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 option up something here very interesting what if i have a new vehicle i'm a new customer new vehicle i'm scheduling an appointment online yes i need an oil service but i also know that i've got something leaking Am I able to indicate that to you as part of my online scheduling or do you wait until the car comes in? No, it's all, it's all part of the Q and a process during the online appointment. Get out of town. Okay. This is very cool. This is very cool. Uh, questions, comments, concerns. We need to hear from you that are watching this. What percentage of your online appointments are being scheduled and showing up? Um, and to your point, Jason, You've got 95% that are showing up. That's really good. Steven, is that usual? Is that the normal for a shop or does it higher or lower? What's the average? Do you have any indications of that? Sure, yes. And most of this is anecdotal. Some of the shop management softwares do have the concept of marking someone as arrived. Some don't. So it's 
difficult. We can't collect for those. Um, but for, yeah, anecdotally, it is in that range. And I think there's a couple things is that in the way we do online scheduling at auto ops is when a customer is scheduling, Jimmy, if you went to schedule somewhere and you got to a contact form, you're smart enough to know that's just going to send them an email. That's just going to send them an email. It's not really connected at that point. That's when I'm really like the, later on in the email, that's when I'm really making my appointment. But when a customer is going through the scheduling process and they see their name pop up in their vehicle, they're like, this is like tied to me. They know who the shop, <laughs> the shop knows who I am. This is clearly how it feels like I'm scheduling a line in other industries. So I think that engagement we make is why we have such a high show rate because the person's like, I like I booked an appointment like I'm showing up and then obviously we do things with confirmation reminders. But yeah, anecdotally, we've heard uh, the the lowest I've heard really is like 80 percent. Most people that, that we work with are yeah in that 80, like high 80s range. Um, but we're excited really to start collecting. Too. Yeah, 80 is really good, too. And uh, yeah, in tech metric, we're working on um, collecting that information as you can mark people as arrived. Um, I, 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 I think, really think it's it, it's just the convenience, the customer. Yeah. It fits their time, and they had the time to make the appropriate decision instead of being put on the spot on the phone or, you know. Yeah, and I think you know, I I, I don't want to over overhype online scheduling and automotive because that's similar show rates to like people booking a restaurant reservation. In the same way, if you booked a table at a nice restaurant, you'll get that thing. You're like, if I don't show up, like I'm losing a table. Like I'm I'm making this restaurant lose a table. You feel like there's a little yeah. bit of guilt into it that people don't get when it's just a contact form. They're like, whatever, if I don't show up, I, I just submitted that contact form. Who cares? Here, there's a little bit, of, I think, a guilt associated it because of the way we engage the customer in the scheduling process. Yeah, I, I, I went to movie theaters, my movie tickets. I was thinking, what else do I schedule online? Movie tickets. But there again, I, I pay for that right up front. So if I don't show... I know that that's all hundred percent on me, but uh, it's, yeah, yeah, you got it right there with uh, with tables and and uh, making reservations. That can be complicated. Yeah, it's, and you get into not not to head down a rabbit hole, but I'd love to hear Jason's thoughts on this. We we currently don't do anything in a shop, including pricing in the scheduling experience. Jason, what are your your thoughts on that? Um, with. <sighs> Service packages, I could see it's okay. Oil changes, maybe fluid service, some basic tire rotation. Um, anything more than that, I, I don't think it's a great idea. I'm sure yeah. there are, my, you know, there may be other shops that may work off that model. It wouldn't be something that would fit us. Well, yeah. let's define this a little bit more. If you're talking about pricing at scheduling, are you talking about just the LOF? Uh, I think the filter, or are you also going into front brakes, pads, calipers, rotors, back brakes, pads, caliper, rotors? And really, what Jason has said is what we've heard from most shops is like the basic, yeah, LOF stuff, maybe tire rotations, alignments, things that really you can have a base price for is like. Could, is there a way that we could offer pricing for that? Whether you just offer a range and you just tell the customer or if there are shops who in the future want to say, hey, I want to collect payment up front for some of these things. Because I know there's larger chains that are getting into collecting payment up front. Um, but like Jason said, I think it would definitely, what I've heard and what I personally think is a good idea is like really basic things. Yeah, like a oil, you know, any kind of oil packages. Um, maybe shops could start there. But kind of what you said, Jimmy, is that talk about getting tied to an appointment. If you're paying, um, yeah. And then the the other option we even had, and I think we've talked about the chase for is I wonder shops feeling on even collecting a payment information. Um, even if you're not charging the customer that you have it on file for people who use text to pay afterward, um, really tying scheduling into the whole process. So yeah, pricing and payments is definitely something we, uh, we think about a lot. Yeah. I, th I think pricing, given, given somebody a price can, can kind of go in both directions. You can scare a lot 100%. of people away. Um, that if you scare them away, they never have the opportunity to come in and no love and trust you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and you, and you, I'll you, still, you still got to have those touch points. My, 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 my uh, situation specifically at my 2012 Ford F-150, I took it in for my lube oil service and, and I knew, we knew that the brakes were getting close. So my $80 oil service turns into an 800 and 50 call it $900 breaks, uh, full back end. Um, and, uh, and then I get another phone call and, uh, Jonathan says, Hey, you know, 
we got your tires off, we got your brakes, blah, 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 blah. You're starting to seep here out of one of the seals on your back. Rear axle, rear differential. I don't know, something like that. He says, and it's not bad yet, but it's going to be, and we're halfway to there. Should we just replace these seals now, or do you want to wait? No, no, do it. Do it right now. So the, now it's $1,200, $1,300 for my oil service. <laughs> and if I was scheduling the oil service and these sorts of things would have come up, I, th I think to your point, I would have been scared away. I would have been like, mm, no, nah, no, nah, I think I'm good. I'll uh, I'll go somewhere else. And yeah. mm, I, I just don't want to face that big monster yet. Yep. So I, I think the pricing is to what Jason has said. And Stephen, you have indicated that, that the LOFs, the air filter replacements, the windshield wipers, not a big deal. Uh, uh, those other items. Yeah, th those I, need a conversation. They need a conversation need a with, with a professional, you know, with somebody behind the counter that does this every day that knows how to sell that stuff. Yeah, nice. Yep. And this is kind of where I say, and, you know, people are going to probably on my team get mad at me, but, you know, online scheduling is a, is a decent service advisor. You still, there is definitely still need for super advanced service advisors who know how to sell those more yeah, expensive deferred work. So yeah. um, there's oh, definitely oh, times where you want to get them to the conversation with a premium service advisor. Although I, I will say, you know, the online scheduling experience and the way we can customize it. The questions that we can ask during the process, that's huge. Um, yeah, just like a, a, a brake noise, you know, where's it coming from? Front, back, is it a squeak, is it a squeal, is it a grind? Those are all customizable questions that we can ask during the online appointment scheduling uh, phase that sometimes your front counter staff might forget. Yeah. Yeah. So um, question for you, and, and this question comes from Gabby, uh, and uh, her question is, uh, is the times for the additional services, are they built into the scheduling? So if I'm scheduling my rear brakes, and, and it's something that I approve right along with my LOF, is, is that now a four hour block instead of just a 30 minute block? I believe it is, yes. Am I yeah. correct, Stephen? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, you, you would you would obviously have to make sure you had it appropriately identified. You know, identified, you know, before the vehicle left last time. You know, if you had a four hour brake job and you had it set for four hours, well, then when they schedule that deferred work that had four hours on it, then it's going to book off four hours. Yeah, and I understand that's a heck of a brake job. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was being generous. Uh, so, so let, we'll take can it. We, can we, yeah, we'll take it. Uh, can we see what this looks like? Can, uh, Stephen, can we look at uh, Jason's yeah. website, yeah. what it looks like when we come in here to schedule an appointment, what that looks like for the consumer? Love to see what that. Yeah, looks definitely. Like let here. me share my screen here. Okay. You guys able to see that screen now? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So this is Jason's wonderful website. He has three locations. Shout out to Jason, all in Massachusetts. Wonderful. Go get your service done there if you're you're in the area. But you'll see this beautiful book service now button. Um, really all online scheduling should do is focus on on these buttons. There's a book service now here, book service now there. Um, like Jason was saying, he has people coming to this um, from from other things like an email where it will automatically open. But once you click on this, It'll open up his auto op scheduling experience. Um, here, he has a multi location selector, so you can select between locations. You can click on a location. Um, once we're in the location, his locations have all different schedule settings. They have different um, settings, which are sending different emails to other people. Um, but even in here, you can see a couple things with the customization is that it's customized to match his shop um, through the colors. But then also Jason has built out what we call the, the issue tree, um, collecting information. Really, the goal here is to collect better information for your technicians lowers time like misdiagnosing or missing things um, like a service advisor would. So let's say, you know, let's say I click into battery, um, something more simple. I'll ask answer some questions that you're able to customize all these parts. 
um, hey, my car starts, but it's turned over slowly. Um, they're able to leave some comments about their service, add a photo or video. Um, like we were talking about, a lot of the, the younger generation or anyone is doing this on a phone, so it's really easy to add a video maybe of a noise that the car is making. I know there's people, I've talked to people who scheduled with auto ops and said, I took a video last week of the car, the sound the car was making, and I was able to just add that for my phone, which is cool for a lot of people. So that's really how we collect information from the customer. And then shop owners like Jason customize that out to make sure they're collecting the information that they need um, in terms of the service to pass on to their technicians. At this point, this is really where it gets into the integration with your shop management software. Um, Jason is using Protractor. We have customers on TechMetric, Shopware, Mitchell, RO Writer, NapaTrax, ShopMonkey. Um, so a lot of different integrations. But at this point, and I'm using my own phone number, actually at this point, this is where it recognizes that I'm a customer in Jason's um, Protractor system. So it's sent me a verification code because we're going to be pulling um, information up. I'll enter that verification code. And like Jason said, and kind of like we talked about, this is really where when you see, hey, hey welcome back, Stephen. It pulls up my vehicle. You're like, whoa. I, I wonder sometimes, I'm sure people are like, what, what, how does this know? What, what's going on here? Um, but it's really cool. Yeah, the customer sees their name pull up, um, feels way better than filling out a contact form. Um, like you had talked about, they can add new vehicles. Let's, let's say they added a new vehicle. Um, that would actually add it to Jason's Protractor account at the end. This is obviously the experience of a returning customer. If this is a new customer, aka someone not in Jason's Protractor system, he can control how much information he collects, whether that's first name, last name, email address, home address, or just, hey, first, last, get them through quick. Um, so like we talked about, schedule my beautiful Buick. And this is where, hey, would you like to add these previously recommended services? These are the services that we uh, we deem necessary to make your keep your car running safely and smoothly. Um, so this is actually, I had Jason go in and add some deferred work to my account for that vehicle. And this is where it pulls up that. So you're catching the customer at a time when they're already engaging with your shop. Like again, I, I was, I had an issue with my battery. I wanted to come into Jason's the shops and we're just saying, Hey, do you want to add these to your service? They're kind of already in that purchasing mindset and it's a low pressure thing. I know a lot of people currently are, you know, sending maybe a text a month later about declined work, which that's a decent touch point. I do think shops should do that. Um, but you know, you're catching them during lunch instead of when they're already engaging with your shop. Um, so here let, I could add one to my service won't add one for now. Um, Jason chooses to collect the address of the customer. It pulls that from Protractor as well. You can also add new addresses to Protractor. Um, this is really where it gets into the scheduling intelligence. So at this point, A, this is based on the original service I selected. For Jason's shop, I know that he has battery services marked as waiter eligible, which I think is a good decision for a dead battery. But if I had selected brakes or if I had selected engine work, it would have actually grayed out this button and said, hey, the service you selected, you have to drop off your vehicle. Um, so I think Jason only has a few. And like most shop owners, you know, maybe inspections, oil changes, stuff with your battery, that could be waiter eligible. Everything else, I want you dropping it off. Um, once we actually click into here, we're going to see different time slots based on um, if it's a waiter or a drop off. So uh, like you said, I could schedule tomorrow at Jason's shop. And this is looking a, at everything in his Protractor account. For Protractor, we're looking at appointments on the calendar and future work orders. So it's taking all that into account when looking at availability, but then he has his schedule settings and auto ops going over top of that. That's where he could say, okay, the soonest I want a customer to be out of schedule is one day out. But if it's a new customer, I want them to schedule as soon as one hour out. I want to get them in quick. And I want to allow three appointments at each of these time slots, but no more than 10 per day. Um, for certain shop management softwares, we can also say, I want two drop-offs per time slot and one waiter per time slot. No many of this per day. Um, we're adding that in for, for Protractor and shop management softwares that use custom flags soon. Um, at this point though, I'm selecting a time. Takes me here. There's a couple other options you could even have about loaner cars um, or things like that for drop-off appointments. Obviously this is a waiting appointment, so it's not showing that. But if I was a drop-off customer, it shows, and I think Jason, a big thing he does is free loaner cars at all your shop locations. Am I correct there, Jason? Yep. yep. Dang. So, uh, a lot of customizable notes, a lot of this stuff, like you're even able to customize stuff like this to make sense for your shop. Uh, I won't book the poor appointment just so Jason's service advisors <laughs> don't freak out. Um, but at this point, it would basically just say, hey, 
congratulations. You booked your appointment. There's customizable notes on that final page. But at this point, and if I booked the appointment, it would actually go in his protractor system. So that's now on the calendar at the correct time with the right service duration, um, customer record, vehicle record, all the information about the services in the note section. Um, for some shop management softwares, we're already marking it as a waiter drop off. For example, in tech metric, you can change the color of the appointment that goes into it. So a lot of cool things we can do without actually going in. But yeah, the goal is that, you know, Jason hasn't talked to me yet. Like we say all the time, the experience starts way before you get in the shop. This customer went on his website booked an appointment, shows up. And at that point, that's where he gets to shake Jason or his service advisor's hand and they create the the relationship with that customer. But the goal is that they don't need to be involved in, in this portion. His managers are also getting an email, even though it's in Protractor, they are getting an email. Hey, this is all the information about the customer. We definitely do have some shops that still call the customers back. Let's say they have a question, uh, you know, customers aren't putting in perfect information all the time. Sometimes I see in the comment section, customers are saying all kinds of stuff. So you can still call the customer back. Um, so you have all that information, even notifies you if it's a new customer. And then we handle the confirmations and reminders for those customers. So that's really what online scheduling looks like for, for Jason and a bunch of other shops around the country. Yeah. <clears throat> Sergio is uh, texting in here saying as well that that this is a seamless operation. Absolutely nothing on the part of service advisors or admin that has to be done. Uh, it, it's super simple, super easy. Sergio, that's freaking awesome, dude. Uh, yeah. I, I didn't even pay Sergio. Holy cow. This is this... <laughs> right? Yeah. So, I mean, so this is cool. That it, this is what it looks like. Now, Jason, for, for your shops. Mm hmm when a customer comes in and schedules this appointment, what is your process after the appointment uh, it, is set? It, it, it depends how far out the appointment is. If it's next day, they're going to get a text message that night. Okay, it's know. two yeah. days. It's two days. So Stephen's example, he's on the 31st. That's two days from now. Yeah, he'll, what, get, what are we doing? He'll, he'll get a text message tomorrow reminding okay. him of his appointment. Um, and he'll text back to confirm. Um, if it's a week out, I believe it's an email three days before and then okay. a text message day before. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. But um, yeah, so that's what it looks like on Jason's site. Jimmy, did you want me to hop in and kind of talk about yeah, online let's, scheduling? Overall? Like when we look at what should we consider when we're looking at an online scheduling appointment yeah. function? What, what should we consider? Uh, is clearly integration with our point of sale system, super high priority. Be yeah. Ability to see deferred up. services or these sorts of things. Um, so what should we look for as we're looking at online scheduling tools? Sure. Yeah. So kind of what we're looking for, once again, like Jason said, full integration with your shop management software. I know there's, and once again, there's some CRM tools that have, uh, we call them kind of fancy forms where it's a light version of a scheduling tool, um, but really focusing on full integration that puts in every part. A, the appointment goes on your calendar, customer record, vehicle record, all the information about their service, marking as a waiter, drop off, making sure that it really is seamless going into your shop management software. Um, yeah, schedule settings. And it's kind of sad because you can't always see it on the front end, but having really complex schedule settings so that you can really have control of your calendar, that's at auto ops, that's what we work on a, a ton is making sure that, Hey, if a time is shown to a customer, I actually want to feel comfortable that I'm going to be able to do that service. And then, yeah, collecting the profit information. Um, we saw that issue tree in the beginning, really making sure that you can collect the information for your customers that you want. Cause a lot of, even on a form, it might have like a, Hey, this is the service I want. You could say, okay, I want breaks. Okay, but do you do you want rear breaks? Being able to prompt the customer in the correct ways that you're actually going to feel comfortable that you're going to get the information you need for your technicians. Um, that's a that's a big point. Um, and then I think the engagement, and once again, this gets into where almost no one is doing it, um, is really showing the customer that you understand who they are, or showing the customer that you understand their vehicle. Um, really, yeah, I think just popping up the name is that part alone is huge. I think psychologically that does a ton for people scheduling. Um, and then, yeah, make sure it's easy for them, making sure it's not too long, it's quick. We definitely have, you can kind of control in our thing, how long you want to be, if you want to collect a ton of information. There's some shops that say, hey, I don't need a billion people coming into my shop, but the people who I do want coming in my shop, I need all their information. So, or the shops are just like, hey, I just want basic information, get them through quickly. So being able to control that. And then one of the biggest thing is just making sure it's customizable. 
in auto ops, there's a lot of notes throughout the scheduling experience beneath the calendar. There's notes on the final pages. There's notes, there's notes about drop off parking. Um, there's little descriptions you can put even like sub descriptions in that service tree. Um, and even like the color and theme, you make it look like it belongs on your shop that you're not like linking out to another page, keeping that customer trust, um, being able to customize and make it personal for your shop keeps the customer trust a lot better. Um, and then, yeah, making sure that you're understanding where this booking came from. Once again, currently at AutoOps, we do a great job at collecting this. We're working on um, presenting this better to, to shop owners as well, but that's definitely an important part of, of what we do. But yeah, once again, there is there is a lot of ways you could schedule. You could have a form on your website, um, but if you're looking for really the best scheduling experience that's going to help out your shop, these are the things you're going to want to focus on. Very cool. Just to just to uh, uh, follow up on one thing on the on the track and pass marketing data, I was just looking at uh, some of the KPIs that we can get out of Auto Ops uh, a few days ago, and something I didn't realize, but out of our we got roughly a hundred online appointments last month, and out of those hundred online appointments, forty five of them were new customers. That's good. Uh, See, wow. You're getting a lot of forty five percent of your online appointments as new customers. I mean, that's that's huge. That is it shows the great. importance. Yeah, and a couple couple of KPIs we think of, and thanks for sharing that, Jason. Couple. Uh, this is this is a surprise for Jason and anyone else using Auto Ops currently. We're going to be releasing probably in the next day or two. We've been tracking on our end for a little bit, but we're going to be releasing it now. Is hey, how many people are scheduling after hours? How many of these people would have had no other option to fill out a form? So we're tracking the people who schedule after hours, the new customers, like Jason said, um, the people who are adding declined services, being able to track, hey, how many people actually added those declined services? Um, those are two other ones that we're adding in. Um, like Jason said, you can currently see new customers versus current customers who are using the scheduling tool, how people are scheduling. A couple of just fun things to think through is you saw me go through that scheduling experience. We can actually track where the customer got to in the scheduling experience. So the amount of people that opened it, maybe they just got to the first two steps, then they backed out. Um, we're looking in ways saying, how can we take that data and change the scheduling process to make sure we get as many people through as possible? Nice. Nice. Hey, Brent's what? asking a question here about uh, integration. Are you What point of sale systems are you guys integrated with right now? Yeah, so definitely integrated with TechMetric. Um, TechMetric, Protractor, Shopware, they're definitely some of our top integrations, um, but we also have full integration. So Techmetric, Protractor, Shopware, ShopMonkey. It's another cloud-based one. Um, getting into the uh, on-premise solution. So Mitchell One, RO Writer, Napa Tracks. Um, we'll soon be releasing ShopBoss, which is exciting for some of the ShopBoss clients. Um, so those are the ones we are currently integrated with. Nice. That's very cool. That's very cool. Sure. Uh, great question, Brent. For all those uh, rest that are listening here, if you've got questions, comments, concerns, I'd love to hear it. Uh, especially if I were to hand you a magic wand, what would your question be? What would your wish be? And and that's an idea here to, to throw out there. Stephen, if we were to pass our shop owners a magic wand, what do you think they would be asking for? What they're asking for, there's definitely ways that we can continue to drive revenue. Even thinking through, I think one of the biggest things is that always upselling the customer in some way. So for the mm -hmm. customers who don't have declined services, is there ways we can pull in recommended services for those customers? Obviously, at the end of the day, obviously, we're trying to provide a great experience, which I think we currently do, but we're also trying to increase revenue at these shops. Um, so finding ways to do that. Um, finding ways to integrate even better with the ways you guys are currently communicating with your customers um, through text message, whether that's on your shop management software. I know Protractor has texting capabilities. I know Techmetric has texting capabilities. So that's some of the things we've been hearing recently. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's some of the important stuff. That is cool. That is very cool. And, and Jason, what about you? If we were to have a magic wand, what would you change next or what would you implement <laughs> next in your online scheduling i th i think steven kind of hit it um you know you got a, a customer that's never been in before new customer they enter their vehicle information you know maybe they have to enter their mileage or rough mileage when they're scheduling that appointment and it comes up with some recommended services that are due around that time you know so, and, and maybe you should ask them you know 
while you're in, if you haven't done these, you know, would you like would you like like us to look at it or investigate it or or just get it done today? Nice, so. nice. Based on industry averages, this yeah. is what the manufacturer recommends, or entering or, your mileage, and this is what or, the manufacturer recommends. Or allow us to customize it to our standards. Yes, yes, definitely for sure. Because some areas are much rougher on a vehicle than other areas. Yeah. One other, I'll just briefly tease this. I think something that shop owners want is customers to be able to book in more places other than their website. Let's say popular places where they search for your shop. Let's say someone's searching for your shop, a mm -hmm. real easy way to book online. Let's say a provider like Google or Facebook. Um, there's things that we can do to make sure that if to put your shop, you know, and give them your customers the easiest way to book at your shop and give them a competitive advantage over the shops in their area on are, platforms are we, like that. Are we, are we talking like a book now button right on Google? Almost, almost Google like profile? that. It was <laughs> almost like that. Like you're, you know, you're a little teenager. You're like, oh, my, the brakes are on my car. And you're on Google Maps being like uh, auto repair, like an auto shop. And there was like one shop with like a book online button. You were like, I'm going to book there in Google Maps, in Google search. It would be really cool if there was a company out there that was releasing a feature like that soon. Are we giving away any secrets? We're giving away. We will give away much more <laughs> secrets. We at, at AutoOps, we're big into not, we're not like promising it. If we say something's like ready to go, it's ready to go. So it's not ready to go. But yes, in the coming weeks. You're developing it. We're working yeah, on it in the in the like in the the one to two week range. You'll, I'll have a much better update. Oh, that's awesome! That's yeah, it's awesome. super exciting. Um, I, I think stuff like that is going to be coming out. Even yeah, I think in face the the places that people are on Google, yeah. Facebook, Yelp, is that they don't always make it to your website. Is there ways that we can even you know there's lead you know sure critic repair pal. Um, places that people don't always make it to your website, but you still want them scheduling an appointment that goes right into your shop management software. If there's a company like AutoOps that just focuses on online scheduling, you would think that they're going to hit that at some point. So that's some of the stuff we're, we're definitely focused on. I, I see it getting there. I see it getting there. I, and John is uh, texting in here frantically. You can see some of these questions that he's got coming through talking about uh, the flags for shops that use the online appointments. I'm, I'm assuming, John, you're talking about like a, plaque or a ceramic plaque a flag that says we use auto ops for our online scheduling something like that would be cool uh and then uh, he also talked to you about uh, an api with protractor or something that i guess you and john had a conversation here recently yep yeah and definitely there's you're just diving into the nitty-gritty of all the different shop management softwares and making sure we're extracting the most amount of value protractor is one we were working on pretty yeah. frequently with our team and Carfax. Carfax. Car Carfax is I, I'm learning. I'm new to the whole the whole Carfax debate. I didn't realize it was a debate. Now I've realized there's some uh some spiciness around Carfax. So I gotta do more of my research. I've heard customer privacy things. It's good, it's great for my shop. I would never use it. So we're uh, we're definitely definitely interested in learning more. For those shops that are fans, it's good to be able to implement for those that are not it's nice to be able to turn off that switch correct yeah and that is how we've seen it utilized by other softwares in the industry and that's yeah if we if we did decide to go that route that's definitely how we'd implement it i love it i love it i love it the, the, if i were to have a magic wand and i were to deem this as to what would work in the industry not only do i love what you're already doing with the scheduling it's the ability for the car to show up on its own. You do the services and it just comes back to me. That'd be great. Yeah. Oh, we'll, we'll do that for you. We'll go pick it up and we'll bring it back to you. <laughs> <laughs> now it's yeah. time to move to Massachusetts. Yeah. <laughs> it's just another step in letting people excel in what they're good at is that we're good at online scheduling, getting people in your shop. We're not good at fixing cars. We were good at fixing cars. I'd have 20 auto shops. Um, but uh, yeah, let people do what they're good at. And um, yeah, Jason runs some some fantastic shops and I'm glad we can uh, help him in this small way. Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's go forward. Let's land this plane. Go forward to our, our thank you slide. Thank you very much to everyone who has been here as we talk about online appointments, online scheduling, 
there is a an entire world of possibilities in this arena of online appointments and and we're on the cutting edge of it all we're seeing things here happening at, in real time this is awesome i'm so excited that we're able to have you here thank you jason thank you steven really appreciate you guys being here thanks for having me Sweet. yeah and thanks we'll so much for for having us on jimmy um yeah excited to see i think the the wave of online scheduling is is coming in hot i love it i love it we'll see y'all again soon we've got a week worth of webinars We'll see you at the next one.